Hello, welcome to episode 31, September 8th, 2017. And welcome to this session about Azure Event Grid. So in this episode, uh, we will talk about uh, the new Azure capability that was available in the Service Event Grid. And also we have some uh, articles or blog posts in this case uh, around this uh, service in the community corner. So events, so we all go to events or you know, this is another kind of context that happens uh, around the world, but that's not really the, the event and what we're we talking about in context with event grid. What is it actually? So of course, when a new technology comes out, there's always all types of, of explanations around what, for instance, an event is or what event grid is, uh, and there will be um, people explaining it and uh, making definitions. So one was kind of interesting was that Clement Fastus, who's on the service bus team, that's the team that actually pushed out event grid, uh, created kind of a, an, a, you know, what an event is. So he says, no, a message expresses intent along with information to realize that intent and an event captures the fact and conveys that fact. Kind of uh, events are kind of things that have taken place in the past. You also see a, a kind of a, a short link here of, of a Twitter storm once you know, event grid uh, was released and people were discussing about, okay, what is this? So we're actually going into what event grid is. So Microsoft released this service, it's kind of fully managed. So uh, it even goes beyond, it's, safe, it's, it's even beyond serverless actually. You don't even have to provision everything, it's, it's, it's there. It uh, provides uh, near real-time uh, scalability, so kind of the scalability uh, is depending on the service fabric. That's where uh, the event grid is built on. And, it, you know, it, it kind of gives you a broad coverage of what you can do with the event grid. So it's kind of the, the backbone of event-driven computing. So you can build kind of reactive apps um, towards events you can subscribe on. So that's kind of what that service uh, provides. So in the past, you kind of had to do long polling or create your own type of uh, developer solution to to capture events. And, and this now is available in, an, in a unified, centralized way with Event Grid. So there's some benefits. Um, you pay per event, so it's a pay-as-you-go model, but you see uh, all around with platform services in Azure, uh, especially the ones that also are serverless, so you only pay for what you kind of you use. And there's some performance uh, stuff and reliability within that service, which I will uh, touch upon in a minute. And it kind of gives you new types of scenarios where you can have on one end um, publishers, or on one end you have um, sources of events, and the other end you have um, the subscribers of it. So I'm going to touch upon that as well. So it's kind of, you can manage everything in one place. It's kind of unique in its kind. So what they offer is kind of um, subsend, uh, second end-to-end -end latency in, uh, in what's in the 99 percent. So it's a pretty steep uh, uh, SLA so, and it's kind of real time. Um, you can do 10 million events per seconds per region, so it's massive scale out. That's because that surface fabrics underneath it so it enables to do you to do that. And there are some uh, reliability offered well as well. So it's like if you push your event to Event Hub, it's not like it instantly goes away if if it you know the service drops. So even when it comes up, there's still a bit. It's about 24 hour retry for that. So that's kind of the characteristics about the service itself. But if you look at you know what's the the actual concept, what's it about? So on one end you have your event publishers, the sources where you can have events from. So this is from all types of Azure services, um, blob, resource group. So let's say a VM is being created or an instance of Cosmos DB, then that event can be uh, pushed towards event grid, and then you can have event multiple event handlers. It's kind of many to many or one to many. That's kind of the, the departments you can support with it. And there's also a capability of, of doing custom events, which I'll later have a demo for you on. So this is kind of the, the, the general concept of event grid and then it's all centralized with, within. So if, if you work in the past with, let's say, BizTalk, that's kind of where the BizTalk's the runtime kind of manages all the messages going in and out. Now, that's a little bit different, but the concept is kind of similar. You, you publish your message and then you have one or multiple subscribers. 
So it's all managed in one place and um, an event can be published and it can be handled. For instance, here you see a screenshot of an event being held uh, handled within a Logic app. So here you kind of can get a, a top, uh, an event, an event, um, you can either subscribe it through the event type or you can have a suffix or prefix as kind of what the filtering is. So, because event can kind of offers also an intelligent routing. So event gets in and then depending on who's interested in that event can subscribe to it, but there are different ways of doing that. As said, there's a broad coverage. There's some publishers, resource, uh, event resource that are available right now. So it's Blob, Resource Group, Azure Subscription, Event Hubs, and you can create your own custom events. You can either have a Cloud Shell, which is an example you can find in the Quick Start, or you can create one through the .NET client. And there's some uh, subscribers available now, the functions, logic apps, uh, automation, and webhooks. So those are kind of available right now, which you can, can use. And of course, there will be more publishers and subscribers coming on, um, as you can see. There's broad coverage. So I built kind of a demo around it. So kind of to touch upon and give you a better grasp of the technology. And so I use a custom event. So I'm, I'm sending a, an event um, that adheres to event schema. So there's a schema there, which I'll touch upon in a minute. And it goes to an event grid topic. So this is one you can create inside Azure and when that message event is pushed towards the event grid, then there's a couple of subscribers all through a webhook mechanism that are interested in the event. So the event's a, a, it's event a type, which is what they subscribe upon. So you get a logic app, you got a function, and you got a webhook. And here for the webhook, I'm using the request bin. And then the logic app can send out uh, a, uh, a notification, depending on some characteristics. There's a function that pushes the message, uh, pushes the event towards the uh, service bus queue. So let's go to the um, the client. This is my .NET client. There's some um, things you need to know if you push a event towards a topic. The security is based around a key, so you need to have that key inside the header. And the other thing you need to know when you create a custom event topic, then you need to have also know the um, endpoint. So you find that up there. The other thing is that the event needs to adhere to a schema. So it needs an ID, a subject event type and time and a data. So let's launch this. And I've put a breakpoint down so you can see what the actual content is. I'll just go to the JSON. And as you can see, this is the data you need to do, ID, subject, event type, and event time. So this is being sent to that event grid topic, and then this is the result. And this is interesting too. As you can see, um, it's a post and it will give a result back 200 okay so this is something you need to know that kind of it's guaranteed delivery and once that e event reaches the topic you will get a 200 saying okay hey i've got it and then the event um, is sent so let's switch over to um azure and let's have a look at the um Topic. So the topic ha is it's created. You can create a topic and then you can sub subsequently end uh, event subscriptions to it. So there's an um, function handler, event handler here, um, which has a kind of a webhook mechanism saying, okay, this is my URL and uh, where you can post or send that top uh, event to based on the event type wind speed event. So they're all interested in event types of the wind speed event. And you also find another subscription here of the request bin. That's a webhook me mechanism. And you also find a logic app subscription here as well. So if we refresh this page, you will see 
the raw body of that event. What I want to note, uh, notice too, or point out too, is that this is also a mandatory field in event schema, but this is added once the event reaches the event topic. So as you saw, I only send the ID subject, event type, and event time, and of course the data. But this is added once the um, event reaches that topic. So let's go to the function. So this is the function I created that will subscribe to that event. And it will get the, um, the event and subsequently will add uh, or do something with that event ending, uh, adding both four to it. So it's got wind speed, but it didn't have both four. So it adds that to it. So let's look at the monitoring page and let's see if it did capture that event. As it says two minutes ago, that was our event. And then you can see here it is. And you can see here it adds that both four to it. So the function subscribes also to events coming into that topic based on that event type. And then there's also um, a logic app. So the logic app can also subscribe to custom events on an event topic. But this is a little bit way around is that uh, within a logic app, you can figure an action trigger you do this based on your uh, action subscription is something you specify. Do know that if you do this in the logic app, you need a service principle. Um, we found out that with an MSDN account, it doesn't work. And um, here you see the resource type, which is topic, but you can also see you can subscribe to event hub namespaces, resource groups. So let's say in a, if something happens within your resource group and the VM is added or uh, well, like I said, a uh, customers to be instances um, created then those type events can be captured here too you can scribe through them in a logic app and that subscription is automatically put in that event grid topic in this case or in my scenario so i didn't have to add that subscription that's being done by itself so so this is the name of the uh, resource and as you can see there's some other things. Also, you find that you can also subscribe to events using that prefix or suffix filter. So this is kind of a demo which I like to uh, like to show you how that event grid kind of works. It's centralized. It sits there in in Azure. Um, I just provisioned it or this, the, the topics you do have to add and it's provisioned pretty quickly and then you can send your events to that uh, topic which has a, an endpoint and also keys in there that are required for authentication. So that's an authentication key you can use. So this pricing towards uh, um, this service, like you know, any type of service pays you go and this kind of the pricing in preview so it's about 30 um, cents per million operations. And it will be 60 once it goes GA, so a little bit more price bump, um, but still a billion messages or a billion events are resulting in that type of operations will be around 300 um, US now and 600 later. And operation include is, you know, all the events that are taken in uh, the matching with the filters, uh, delivery intent, uh, delivery of, of your events and, and management calls. So those are kind of what operations are. Um, the first 100,000 are free per month. Um, you get, there is a limitation on the amount of uh, event subscribers per, uh, per account. And there's some throttling around uh, the operations as well. But this is kind of the, what the cost will be for your, um, using that event grid. And that's an important thing though to notice about the workload. So you can push billions of events to event grid. It can handle it because it you know, kind of scales with you. But you also think about the subscribers to your events because let's say you want to run a billion events through logic apps, then you can have kind of, kind of steep costs because that will easily run into the 10,000s of dollars. So you have to think about that too. 
if you want to really want to subscribe to all those events depending on the service or pro uh, subscriber that wants to do that because you can run into costs if you don't think about that so there's some community content too uh, i like to uh, point out to you guys you know once the service was released um, people jumped up to it yeah you, know, you know there's this these discussions on twitter but also people are start writing blogs about it so one is uh, tom kirkhover who wrote kind of free blogs around the service and i like really really like that one talked about the service itself about security um, scalability but also some of the new ways of 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 handling webhooks so he talks about that too uh, and giving an example of, of api management directly pushing an event towards event grid and then have multiple handlers so he created free blog posts um and so did sarvana kumar who also wrote a blog post so tom wrote about uh, uh the azure event grid free posts um one of the things uh, he really likes is the, the capability and possibility unified messaging between services or when events are being um, it's not messaging it's more events being sent towards uh, different services so really, really really interesting blog post and the other thing of course is uh, Sarvan in this case wrote something uh, towards it like okay hey i've got service bars you know is, is it still what do you use that for? You got the event grid, you got Azure Event Hub. So what do you choose? If it's service bus, it's kind of more when you want to have more control. Uh, it's about transactions. Uh, you can do types of store forward, load balancing stuff with your um, queues and, and topics. So that's definitely what it's, what it's intended for. And that's where it sits. If Azure Event Grid, what we talk about is how about handling the events in a centralized and uniform way and having publishers and subscribers um, on each end. And then you got the Azure Event Grid, which is more, uh, not uh, the Azure Event Hub, which is more intended to, to you for tele telemetry data, um, when lots of events pushes in and you have to stream and lit on, on as a <clears throat> to analyze all those those telemetry stuff and then see animality. So that's where it fits in it's a little bit more in the, the IoT type of uh, space. Okay, so we talked about the Azure Event Grid. I showed you a demo. Um, it's still early days, but it will evolve. Um, as you see, there are some publishers and, and some subscribers, and, and, and in the near future, more will be added to it. It's kind of the missing piece um, with the overall messaging because there wasn't anything like a centralized way of managing your events. There is for messaging with the service bus. So it kind of really fits in that space and it really adds value to it and it's unique in its kind that again, there's not really any competitor that has this type of service out there. And once you explore this technology, it's fairly easy uh, to understand and I hope I've clarified or showed you that with um, the demo I showed you. Okay, if there's some feedback, to this is kind of my first um, episode with uh, middle of friday so keep it coming through for twitter or uh, email us um, and i'd like to leave you with the credits of uh, the music i used it's uh, a band called leprous they're from uh, the scandinavian countries and they put a recent album out called melina um, Thanks for watching. Um, I'd like to thank Visit360 for making this possible. Also note that there will be an Integrate US um, in about five or six weeks when you uh, look at this uh, this episode. So definitely if you want to go and, and see us on stage, then definitely come up. So it's Microsoft MVPs uh, talking about all types of integration stuff and the event grid will be probably one of the, the subjects to there. So please do, do join uh, if you can. Thank <laughs> you.